That's me, contemplating on purchasing one of the virtually identical yet for some reason still version exclusive $35 DLCs for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But for there to be two separate full price DLCs, Game Freak is assuredly gracing us with some awesome game changing narrative altering exclusives. Well I do love me some Gligar. Funnily enough. This game hadn't even crossed my mind in the last six months. I wasn't even gonna buy the DLC, but I told myself, do it for the content. But I was having second thoughts as I eyed the sales tax. That's almost 40 bucks. I can get a whole nother game for that much. Still, I bought it. Disclaimer, I am judging the Tillman's standalone DLC and based on its state of release. Yes, I am fully aware that the cost includes part two of the Inigo disc, but as they were released four months apart with no release date for the second part at one time, this is exactly what you got for the $40 price tag. So anyway, it starts with you getting a call from your biology teacher, Professor Jock, congratulating you on spending 40 bucks. You stupid. He explains that you were randomly selected to go on a school field trip. So you head to the school that, let's be honest, you probably forgot was in the game, and then, This leads me to one of Game Freak's strongest and weakest points. I often cannot complain about the character designs, really. They consistently make some of the coolest, most interesting looking characters. At this point, I even argue that they're better at designing characters than Pokemon, but again, typically the Pokemon have more personality. Unfortunately, here we're again reminded of how honestly grating the lack of even a minimal amount of voice acting feels. Don't know why, but I was really expecting to hear her say something. Right, they don't they don't talk in this game. Anyway, you agree to the field trip and your chaperone, Miss Briar, takes you and the other three students that bought the DLC on a flight to the beautiful and rustic land of Kitakami. Wait, I'm sorry, but has anyone noticed how quick we ditched the Spanish motif of Paldea? I mean, for a region based on the Iberian Peninsula, the only remotely Spanish things about the main game was the town names and the odd phrase from Nimona. But Game Freak said, fuck it, we're going to Japan too, the sequel, now with 50% more Japan. It just bothers me is all. Weirdly enough, Game Freak again drops the ball right at the introduction. Welcome to the land of Kitakami. Ooh, oh. It's actually my first time here too. Why the rice fields are really just dazzling. I guess. You can't ride Corridon right now. Thanks. Back to regular fucking walking then. For whatever reason, you can't ride your mount. Maybe to force you to take in the sights, but Kitakami looks pretty much the same as anywhere else in the main game. Not much to see here. Grass, mountains, trees, whatever. Your immersion doesn't last long when the shadows start janking out anyway. Shouldn't they have fixed this by now? I will say though, the musical score is fantastic. Very atmospheric. As I stared into this corefish's soulless, vacant eyes and looked around at the other familiar Pokemon skittering about, it made me think about how convenient it's gotta be taking away so many Pokemon out of the base game only to sell them back in a DLC package. Why can't I go up this?
After battling nostalgia and buggy architecture, you arrive at Masui Town. Here, you meet the actual main characters of the Teal Mask, if you couldn't tell by the Yu-Gi-Oh! MC hair. The beautifully bombastic Carmine and her shy and reserved younger brother Kieran. Pretty good designs. And even furthermore, they have custom animations that add to the surprising amount of personality that they have on display. The obligatory battle commences and is is that put you in a level 60? As unbelievable as it is, unlike the main game, the Teal Mask actually does implement level scaling. Depending on if you've beaten the Elite Four or not, the Pokemon are either levels 10 through 30 or 50 through 70. Still, we don't fuck around, so put that trash back in the ball. This is the boys restroom. This is the girls restroom. This restroom can be used by anyone. This is the future liberals want. The next day, all the students get split into groups for an assignment. You are to visit three signposts around the island and take a selfie at each one with your partner. You get paired with Kieran, who apprehensively challenges you to a battle. And trust me, this won't be the last time. A level 59 century. Dude, evolve that thing. What the fuck? On your way to the signs, you're pretty much free to roam as you please, but Kitakami is not so much a new area to explore as it is a new area to run around in picking shit up. Not really anything to see or to find. I thought the ground items in the base game were pretty egregious, but here it's just ridiculous. They've already more or less made competitive pay to win, but if you're going to sell me items, just sell them to me. Scattering them all over the ground and making me pick them up is just demeaning. Anyway, you make it to the first signpost and get hit with an old-fashioned lord dump. Long, long ago, there was a fearsome ogre in the land of Kitakami. The ogre made its home in the mountain beyond the village, frightening all who ventured there. One day, the ogre came down from the mountain in a terrible rage, causing great fear in the village. By some stroke of luck, Okie Dogi, Monkey Dory, and Fezendipity all happened to be there as well. The three Pokemon laid down their lives to fend off the ogre and send it back to the mountain. In admiration, the people of the village bestowed upon this brave trio the title, The Loyal Three. Their remains were given a proper burial and statues of the three were erected above the site. They're fucking dead. Do you think the ogre in that folktale sounds kinda cool? No. The battle was three against one, but the ogre still managed to hold its own. That's way cool. So Kieran admires an ogre that does murder because it was outnumbered. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's wrong. That's kinda cool, doing murder. But he seems to have an unhealthy admiration for strength as a whole. On to the next sign. Sorry if I don't sound excited. The ogre possessed four mysterious glimmering masks. It's said that depending on the mask the ogre donned, the powers of its cudgel would change. When wearing the teal mask, it could bring life back into the withered greenery around it. When wearing the crimson mask, it could turn a candle's flame into a raging inferno. When wearing the blue mask, it could stop the very flow of a river. When wearing the ashen gray mask, it could easily break the hardest stone in two. Before the loyal three fell, they wrested away three of the ogre's masks, greatly weakening it. Everyone in town scared of the ogre, but me? I really like it. I like the ogre. <laughs> If you wanted, we could go see the ogre's home. Folks call it the dreaded den. Totally, dude. Let's go to the dreaded den. That's a place to be. For some insane reason, you agree to go through the infernal pass and up to the dreaded den. And after an unnecessarily long trip, you meet back up with Kieran. That's it. 
That's the legendary dreaded den. It looks like a damn butthole. I guess that got Kieran riled up because suddenly he wants to battle again. After defeating his stupid, overleveled ferret in front of the butthole dungeon, Kieran remembers that tonight is the first night of the Kitakami Festival, an event held every year to honor the loyal three and celebrate their defeating of the ogre. So your school assignment can wait. He even invites you over to his grandparents' house so you can get some appropriate attire to participate in- Oh hell no, man. What the fuck? What the hell? Don't just change my hair without my consent. How'd you even do that? This high top fade is all I got. Luckily, his grandma gives you a teal style card so you can now get new haircut options at any salon. Much needed after the base game's lack of customization. Kitakami ponytail, no thank you. Kitakami updo. This wasn't in the base game? Center parted bob. Okay, dude it costs $30 to get this hair. That's really cool. Half up bun. G what? Fucking Bantu knots? Let me get this straight. You made me pay 40 bucks to travel from Pokey Spain all the way to Pokey Japan to sell me an African hairstyle? There's only eight new hairstyles anyway. All of them should have just been a free update to make up for the dog ass customization the game already had. Whatever. It's finally time for the festival. They prominently featured it in the key art and in the trailer. So you know it's gotta be big. In fact, it has to be the single most pivotal event of this DLC. Ugh. Nobody's here. This has got to be the biggest letdown. Other than a few food stands, there's nothing to see or do. Just a gigantic, massive, titanic missed opportunity. The only thing to actually do is this awful mini game called Ogre Austin, where you hit balloons and collect berries. Sort of like the Rotom Rally in Sword and Shield, but, and I cannot stress this enough, somehow even worse. Because of Scarlet and Violet's no less obvious performance issues, the frame rate is just constantly dipping and ducking and diving and shucking and jiving and jumping and hooping and hollering. Corridon already controls like shit, so I can't even properly describe how not fun it is. How does anyone in Kitakami even play this without a dinosaur to ride? And no, I don't care if it's a great source for berries. Nobody saw that. Mysterious child is staring at you from behind their mask. So what you're telling me is that every year for literally hundreds of years, the people of Kitakami have been mistaking this for a human child, presumably because it was wearing a little mask. What the fuck? Hey, listen to this, it's nuts. Kiki's no use at all. Zero talent for Alston Ogres, I tell you. Alston Ogres? Tell me what to do, you don't even know me. Hey, new kid, that goes for you too. <laughs> Come back, the mountain's dangerous at night. It's not a fucking human. 
Are you guys stupid? So here we have our first real look at the legendary Ogre Pond. Being the cynic I am, I didn't like it at first, but I do have to admit the design grew on me. I just don't get it. Like, what exactly is the design philosophy behind it? I get that we're, we're doing Momotaro, right? The story of the little boy found in the peach blossom that teams up with some animal companions to fight off some ogres, but with roles reversed. And this time we have a a, a, a peach ogre, maybe? Uh, is Ogre Pond meant to be like a fusion of Momotaro and the ogre? How is this an ogre? It looks more to me like a like an orange. You found the teal mask. Roll them credits. You pick up Ogre Pond's mask and it jets. Kieran comes up literally seconds after, but for some reason, Carmine wants to keep Ogre Pond a secret from him. And I have no idea why. Why would we not tell the number one Ogre fan that we just met the Ogre? Maybe so he doesn't go off after it, but we literally already took the infernal pass to the dreaded den. We can't possibly do any worse. So you bring the mask to the sibling's grandpa and he tells you the true history of Ogre Pond in the village. This story has been passed down in our family by word of mouth. I learned it from my father. A story of truths. A story that must never be told to the rest of the village. Must never speak of it to others. Why is it a secret? A long time ago, a man and an ogre came to Kitakami from a foreign land. The people of the village feared the man and the ogre who looked so different from them. I mean, dude's a fucking buffed out Giga Chad, built like a brick wall shit house. What do you expect? It's, he's obviously a Sigma male. So they refused to let the travelers come anywhere near the village. The man and the ogre were saddened that the villagers did not welcome them. But they were happy to just have each other. They settled quietly in a cave on the mountain. There was only one villager who pitied the travelers. The village mask maker. He made several masks for the man and the ogre. The masks were brilliant works adorned with gems the man brought from somewhere far away. By wearing these masks, the travelers could hide their true faces and mingle with the villagers. No fucking shot. No fucking shot, dude. That's stupid. Huh, girl? That's stupid as hell. Like, he's still built like a like a fucking bodybuilder. If anything, the mask makes him scarier. The man and the ogre were over. That's terrifying. The mask and the ogre were overjoyed. They thanked the mask maker for his kindness. Wearing the mask, the man and the ogre started secretly joining the village festival. The mysterious pair soon became the talk of the village because of their brilliant masks. Okay, but they're freaks. They're absolute freaks. In fact, rumors about them spread quickly. Far and wide, even to distant lands. Rumors of exquisite shining masks attract more than just innocent curiosity. Ooh, a group of greedy Pokemon soon made their way to the land of Kitakami. These Pokemon sneaked into the cave in which the man and the ogre lived, and they tried to make off with the masks which were carefully stored away. The man happened to be there, he managed to hold on to one of the masks. But he was not strong enough to protect them all. The Pokemon stole the other three masks. Several hours later, when the ogre returned to the cave, it found its beloved home in ruin. All that was left were the signs of a struggle and a teal mask. What have I got? The ogre donned that mask and went down to the village, perhaps to search for his friend. He also had that thing on him. It found the greedy Pokemon there, gloating over their stolen mask and beat the living shit out of them. Beat the fuck out of them, even. Look at Oki Doggy. He got it the worst. The villagers, of course, had no idea what was happening, nor why. All they saw was the raging ogre. They felt great fear. The villagers thought the three Pokemon had fallen, trying to protect the village from the ogre. 
to honor their sacrifice, the villagers named them the Loyal Three and interred them with care. So they didn't even know shit about what was going on. Not a single fucking thing about these mysterious Pokemans. And they just decided to idolize them. Wounded and weak, the ogre returned to its cave alone and with great sadness. Well, where's old dude? Did he fucking die or what? This shit makes no sense to me. For seemingly no reason at all, Grandpa doesn't want to tell Kieran or the townspeople the truth because the time is not right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Eavesdropping, huh? You little eavesdropper. He's like, I fucking knew it, dude. Oh, uh, hey, Jack. So I was going to ask, what were you and my sis just uh talking about? Ah, oh, shit. We shit, this and that, you know how it is. You know how it is. This motherfucker lying to me. S so about those signs, the last one's a bit of a hike away. It's in the Paradise Barrens on the other side of Oni Mountain. We'll need to hit over the mountain and down the whatever. Why'd you lie to me? After you lie right to Kieran's dumb little face, the two of you head to the last signpost to finish your field trip assignment, and he gets the nuts to challenge you again. <clears throat> hey, before we check out the sign, could you battle me? This time, I win. Very unlikely. Stop it. Cause I'm, oh, God, he's doing the Arthur fist, dude. This is such an awkward picture. Well, we're all done with our assignment now, but I've got to get stronger with my Pokemon. I'm going to head home. The next day, you meet up with Carmine at her house. It turns out the teal mask is broken, and the last thing that their grandpa needs is a crystal cluster from the Lake, Lake of Lag. <laughs> For some reason, the game can barely handle rendering this area at all. The frame rate drops and speeds up constantly. Just the lack of polish here is insane. All they really did was drop the exact same crystal model from Area Zero in some water and somehow the game just dies so instead of having a cool diving game or something a melodic just hand delivers you the crystal in some kind of kamikaze attack i live and i die by the crystals wherever i go my partner follows Let's see about that Holy shit, she wasn't lying. Back to grandpa and wouldn't you know it, Kieran stole the mask. You go to the loyalty plaza to confront him and I mean, he makes some fair points. You knowingly lied to him about his favorite thing for no reason at all. You knew that the ogre wasn't the real bad guy in the stories and shit. The loyal three were the real bad guys the ogre's the one that gets treated like an outcast. You you knew? And you you and you two did the same thing to me. Is it really the same thing, bro? You treated me like an outcast when you went and met the ogre. Well, this is why we didn't tell you, you little shit. You're no different than those villagers back then. You know how much I love the ogre. You acted like you didn't know anything, but you were laughing at me behind my back all along. It's not what happened at all, bruh. Liar, bruh. Oh, dude, he's about to get anime, anime fish eye on us, dude. 
This conflict feels so forced. I really wish Game Freak would just let us make choices that mattered. I really hate the lack of player agency. Almost as much as I hate the fact that there's only one way to reconcile your differences in the Pokemon universe. Sorry kid, your Pokemon are bad and you should feel bad. After you beat Karen for the fourth damn time, he gives you the mask back and runs off home. Then this shit happens. Hey, can you hear something? Is it coming from the Loyal 3 mo monument? Excuse me? These Pokemon look trustworthy. They came back to life. For no reason. Ignoring the completely unexplained revival, the Loyal Three immediately start scheming, plotting, and conniving. Then they all duck off. Probably to go shoot the Fade with Ogre Pond. Kick its ass. You catch up to the Laurel 3 at Ogre Pond's butthole dungeon, and uh, am I the only one that thinks this jumping is kind of justified? Yes, they stole Ogre Pond's mask, but it murdered them to death with a cudgel. And though implied, it's never explicitly said that they actually killed Ogre Pond's master. Either way, you help fight off the Laurel 3 and they run off with Ogre Pond's mask again, leaving you to team up to get them back. There's a boss fight with each of the Loyal Three, but we're pretty much gonna skip over those. Uh, randomly, they're all Titans now, and other than that, they're about what you would expect. Nothing really too challenging or unique. Though, I did run into a funny little bug during the Monkey Dory battle. My Miascarada ended up getting KO'd and it just refused to let me send out another Pokemon. Where's my... Do I not get to play or what the fuck? So I was forced to just sit there and watch as Carmine solos her way into making me have to repeat the boss battle again. With the Loyal Three defeated and the Hearth Flame, Wellspring, and Cornerstone Mass safely in the ha hands of Ogre Pond, Kieran wants to bring Ogre Pond to the village. It's time for the true story to come out about the legend of Kitakami. The townsfolk are all about to have their entire way of life flipped on its head in an instant. And after this, one thing is for certain. Nothing will ever be the same. We all owe you a great apology. What? Hey, what's going on? Why is there something about face? Kieran's been running around the whole village telling everyone the true story of what happened. I guess I should have just done that in the first place. I was worried he'd stir up a lot of resentment, so I told him to stop, but... We're sorry, ogre, you fucking ogre. Ogre Pond's so cute. Seems that I was wrong to worry so much. Who knew Kiki had it in him, especially since he usually hates talking to people? Whoa, a character arc. From now on, you can come to the village whenever you want. And you don't need to hide your face when you do. But we just got him all these fucking masks. The three masks we kept at Kitakami Hall rightfully belong to you all along. If you manage to get them back from those three villains, please feel welcome to keep them. We got the mask back, and we managed to clear Ogre Pond's name. Now that's what I call a happy ending. One last thing to do, let's escort, escort Ogre Pond back to his home.
So that's it. Hundreds of years of misguided resentment just amounted to, oh, damn, for real? They've been playing a game where they basically hit Ogre Pawn with a car for centuries. Honestly, the least believable, least satisfying conclusion to the Masui Town arc possible. I know how idealized the Pokemon universe is most of the time, but damn. Hey, you know what? I think Ogre Pond might want to go with you. That's crazy. That's crazy. This dude salty. Hey, hold up. If it's not going to stay here. Then I want to. I want Ogre Pond to come with me. Fuck free will. Kiki. I know I'm being real selfish, but Jack, please let me battle you. I want to see which one of us should get to keep Ogre Pond with them. Ogre Pond doesn't get a goddamn choice. That little motherfucker's going to belong to me, goddammit. I want him. I want that little orange face. Yeah, what about Ogre Pond? I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Ogre Pond said, what the hell is happening? I want to battle anyway. I'm sorry, punk ad boy. What, what the fuck is he sorry for? I don't understand what's happening. Look, if I absolutely have to give Game Freak one single thing on this DLC, it's that the final battle to prove yourself against Ogre Pond is actually pretty darn cool. You've got to beat it four times in a row each time wearing a different mask that changes its typing and gives it free stat boosts. It doubles as a satisfying challenge and an introduction to the types of things that Ogre Pond will be capable of once it's yours. It's an excellent conclusion to an otherwise lackluster story. Hey, well done. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I know. I'm the greatest that there ever was. Congratulations. Thanks. A loser. Yeah. <clears throat> Why can't I be like you? Well, I'm glad you came to visit. I mean, it's not like this is goodbye forever. Blueberry Academy has tons of strong trainers. You better come visit soon. I almost forgot. I still need to get packed and everything. This is not goodbye, okay? We're definitely going to see each other again. Sure. Fix my fucking hair. That's Carmine for you, I suppose. You never know quite what to expect from her. These moments, once you get into the little ones, I need to become. I need to become a lot stronger. Stronger, 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 and stronger. Dude, that hairstyle is uh, definitely no thank you. What's wrong with this kid? Just you wait, Jack.
and so you're done. If you don't get distracted by all the shiny things on the ground, it takes little less than six hours to beat the main story. But what more is there to do? You could complete the Kitakami Pokedex. Yeah, we ain't doing that. You could track down and defeat the members of the Ogre Clan. Maybe we could hunt down and catch the Loyal Three. We could help the caretaker raise one million Poke Dollars to repair the shrine. Well, I guess the only other thing is helping a pretty girl named Baron take pictures of Pokemon. Why does she even care about my Pokédex? Uh. Anyway, while in the middle of fulfilling Perrin's weird quota, I ran across this thing. Poltergeist is one of the seven new Pokémon being introduced in the DLC. My question, why did they cut a full four minute semi live action trailer for this thing? It played no role in the story at all. I, I honestly forgot about it. Let me take this moment to say I'm not a big fan of convergent evolutions. In a vacuum, they're a cool idea and an interesting reference to like real life evolution, but feel free to fight me on this. It just feels like another corner they can cut when making new Pokemon by redesigning older ones and not even passing them off as regional forms, but as entirely new Pokemon. Also, killing people with matcha? That's stupid. Yeah, that brother's starving. Perrin's whole deal is that she's trying to get photos of something known as the Blood Moon Beast, so she wants you to meet her in the timeless woods for some photography. <laughs> oh my god. Game Freak actually released a highly rated new Pokemon Snap game back in 2021, so it should be pretty easy to make this a break from the tired gameplay loop of endless battling and catching. I mean, it should be simple. Just copy paste some of the mechanics over from Snap over here like a little mini game, right? <laughs> Wrong! Unfortunately, this is ass. The area is huge. And you have no choice but to go on foot with your terrible movement speed. Well, I guess, I guess your movement speed isn't really that bad, but it's just that the maps are massive to accommodate ride Pokemon. But there's no ride Pokemon here only pain. To make it worse, the Pokemon that you're looking for are all devastatingly far away from each other. Really, it just feels like a way to eat at your sanity while keeping play times high. But perhaps worst of all, it's boring. boring. Anyway, now that all that legwork is over, it's time to find this so-called Blood Moon Beast. Okay, that's actually horrifying. Um, here's a thought. Did we really need another form of Earth's Luna so soon? We just got the one that we have, and this one's like the Ursaluna your mom says you have at home. I've been waiting for you to come by, partner. I managed to develop the photos I took the Blood Moon Beast. Let me see the motherfucker, dude. They're all blurry. Bitch, I have the thing. I can just, I can just show you. And that's about all that's worth talking about in this DLC. But the question still stands. Does the Till Mask suck? Mm.
Mm, yes. Why, yes, it does. The DLC is unfortunately already built on the foundation of a hardly performing, buggy, unpolished game that Game Freak at this point chooses to leave the way that it is. But even then, they're charging you 35 bucks plus tax to throw more fuel on the dumpster fire that is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Acknowledging that this is only half the DLC, this half surely isn't worth the price. There's so little engaging content here that either the till match should have been a free update, the two parts should be sold separately, or the price should just be straight up cut in half. But I'm looking forward to hearing your opinions in the comment section. Hey, thanks again for watching. I was having a ton of computer and internet issues while making this, but a lot of effort went into this video, so please like, comment, and subscribe below for follow-up video with the Indigo Disc. Bye! Just leave a recording. Get that mask. <laughs> no! <laughs> That's fine. It'll be...